Hello, let's go through another Lisa Belladonna patch. Um, so I've done one pre-patch. This cable is coming out of the clock out on the back because in my particular setup, not always so easy to get to the clock ins and outs. Um, so I just wanted to do that to spare you guys me climbing on the uh, rack here in front of <laughs> in front of the Moog and showing you my butt and all of that stuff. Um, so we're just going to... Stick with this already being the way it is. Um, so first thing, we're going to match the knobs. Um, so rate is pretty low. All of these are low. Waveform is a square. And we've got a 32 foot and a 2 foot. Um, frequencies in the middle, so those are supposed to be kind of tuned together. And we have two triangle waves. Uh, oscillator 1 is about 11. Oscillator 2 is about 9. High pass is about 11. Attenuator is about eh, 2 or 3. Really 2. Our filter is about 1. Envelope amount all the way up. Resonance down. And then we have this at a 1 to 1. We have an attack at about 1. We have a release at about, sorry, decay at about 11, re releases all the way up, sustain is down to number 3-ish, and where's the reverb? Oh, we've also, we're using keyboard release mode, and our reverb is a little past unity. Okay, so, this is one of those patches I kind of learned a lot from, um, so we are going to take I'm going to go from left to right. We're going to take our rate in, and we're going to take it from the envelope positive. Um, so we've done this before, <coughs> where, you know, as voltage goes up, it makes the rate go faster. And you can kind of see that. Our next patch is we're going to go from the wave out to the malt. Here we go. And then our next patch is sample and hold out to the malt. Okay, so two different waveforms go into the malt. Then we're going to take out of the malt and go to the attenuator. And then we're going to take out of the attenuator and go to pitch in of the second oscillator. Okay, so this is going to control some really wild pitch modulation, it looks like. Right? Now, we are going from the clock out to the high pass in. And then we're going from the high pass out to the pitch in. Uh, I'm kind of running out of the right size cables here. To the pitch in of oscillator one. All right, so that's a lot of patch points. Let's hear what it sounds like. <laughs> All right, so we can pull the main event out of here. Oscillator two. <laughs> so that's pretty fun, right? Because basically we've taken our square wave with a sample and hold. So it's going to combine the two. So we're jumping with the square wave 
and then where you, you know the sample will hold is doing its own kind of jumping and we control the amount with the attenuator here so big attenuation so this will be bigger pitch variation and then our rate is being controlled by the envelope voltage so it's like you know bringing things up now I'm having a weird thing happen here because last time I patched this um, the high pass filter was doing a little more uh, so let's see if we can isolate that turn this guy up alright so I figured out what this is um, so this relies the clock out doesn't happen unless you're using the arpeggiator um, so we'll play tuna Okay, so what's happening here is the clock out is putting out a sawtooth wave. Um, you can hear it the more I mess with the high pass filter. Um, so what this is doing is we're adding basically a, a rhythm to our lower, um, our lower octave here. Um, so I'm turning on the arpeggiator, play two notes. And you hear the more I fade out the um, high pass voltage there, the, the filter, you're hearing more and more of that. So there's our rhythm. <laughs> we can turn up noise. <laughs> so we've got a lot of stuff to play with here. You know, we've got our static patch. I, I kind of prefer this one, because for me, the interesting part is the speeding up and slowing down that's happening here. Um, but the arpeggiator is cool, too, because we're getting, like, you know... So really fun. Um, my main takeaway from this is, number one, that clock um, pulse has a really interesting shape. Um, so it can be used for other things, too. You could put it into probably pulse width modulation um, and get something interesting out of it. Um, among other things, you could put it into linear FM of oscillator 2 and find something interesting there. Um, let's actually try that one. So I'm going to turn off oscillator 1. <laughs> so that's super fun. And you know, with the high pass, we're like controlling all the things that can happen there. <clears throat> um, so I hope that gives you some ideas. You know, my, my main takeaway is the clock pitch shape, or the, the shape of that pulse, and then, you know, taking two waves and putting them together with the malt um, to create these wild pitch things. So I hope that gives you some ideas to play with.